All right, guys, Johnny Rocket here with another video. We're gonna teach Mark how to swim. He's a beginner. He is a strong individual. He served in the Marine Corps. We thank him for his service. Today, we're gonna get him started on the basics of being more comfortable in the water, able to float, balancing in the water so that he can start to swim more efficiently on his own. Over the next four days, we're gonna teach him how to become a competent swimmer, help him breathe to the side, and allow him to swim up to four laps on his own without getting too exhausted. Hello, my name is Mark. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, here to do some private swim lessons for uh, four days with uh, Johnny. I came up on the channel a few months ago when I had a little incident in the uh, Bahamas that made me really want to pick up swimming. So I started to research the channels. I've uh, been a big fan of his ever since I found his channel on YouTube about three and a half, four months ago. Been watching it ever since. Uh, hooked up with that total. Uh, Beginner swimmer, funny thing with my story is I like to say I served uh, honorably in the United States Marine Corps, did not learn how to swim while I was in there, which was interesting. So uh, hoping to accomplish uh, some of the basics and uh, leave you with a solid foundation of uh, how to swim. We're gonna help you first learn how to get your breath, circular breathing up and down. We're gonna teach you today also how to roll onto your back for a breath because this tipping that you're describing is someone who's uncomfortable being balanced in the water and they need to know how to roll to their back comfortably. Once you roll into your back for a full breath, eventually we'll just get you to roll halfway, it's a half pineapple, and that's your side breath. But until you can get all the way back here, that roll is gonna make it hard for you to get your breath even if you can get the circular breathing down, which we're gonna do right now. So pretty easy stuff, very basic. If you have problems with breathing, but uh, like you feel like you can't get your air or you get stuck in this weird pattern of I'm not, I don't know when to blow out, when to breathe in. We're gonna start with basic bobs. You take a deep breath above the water. And when I say deep breath, I don't mean breathe in above the water. I mean, take a deep breath, go beyond what you actually need. Deposit the air under the water, through your nose or through your mouth. It doesn't matter, whichever you're more comfortable with. My recommendation is if you get water up your nose, then you'll want to blow the air out of your nose. If you're not someone who normally gets water up their nose a lot, you've never had that problem, you can do either or, mouth or nose. I probably do mouth, but I notice sometimes I do nose too. It always depends if there's water or gunk up in my sinuses that I wanna get out. Maybe I'll switch to my nose for a couple of breaths. But anyways, we're gonna take a deep breath up here, blow it out another breath. Again. <laughs> Good. So being able to get one breath at a time and deposit it as opposed to coming up and needing to get two or three is also important. It's controlling the breath. Because when you turn your head to the side to breathe in freestyle, you only have time for one breath. You won't have enough time before that arm comes around to get a second breath. When you're on your side, it's easier to sink too. So you really don't have time for a second breath. You gotta be able to get that breath real quickly. So depositing your air in the water before turning to the side to breathe, right before turning to the side to breathe, is how you'll get your breath to the side. The second thing we're gonna do though, is now we're gonna talk about how your body floats when your lungs are full of air. When you're airtight, when you have so much air in your lungs that you can't sniff up, I can't sniff, I've got my lungs maxed out with air, my body will float, and it'll float for a long time. There's nothing about being in the water that makes me have to do more than that, just float. It's like being on the moon. There's almost no gravity on the moon. Same with water, there's almost no gravity. Let that be fun for you. Let that work for your advantage. Don't try and fight water. Let it float you. Let it have some fun like you're in a bounce house. Okay, so I'm gonna take a deep breath. I'm gonna float. I'm gonna let out all my air and you'll watch me sink. Ready? So when we swim freestyle, Mark, we're gonna wanna keep our lungs 90% full of air. And when we blow out to the side, we're only gonna blow out half our air and bring it back up to max real quickly. 
That's a that's a that's the stark difference than what most people do when they get in the water, and that is blowing all the way out. So I practice, I have you practice blow all the way up, and now we're only gonna practice blowing halfway out. You ready? Goggles on. Deep breath in, halfway out. Good. Already you probably feel like, oh man, I feel like I've got more energy. That's because if you breathe in more than you let your air out, your body gets up. Your heart rate gets up, your body feels good. If you're blowing out more than you're breathing in, your body relaxes and you feel lazy. That's why people who meditate are blowing more air out than they're breathing in, or it might be an equal amount. But if you're exercising, you wanna be bringing more than you're letting out. Not to the point where you pass out, okay? But to keep keep your heart rate up and to feel more confident. All right, so next step, you're gonna be having, uh, you're gonna have your, your lungs full of air, you're gonna put your face in the water and you're just gonna kick with your hands out in front of you. We're gonna establish front quadrant swimming. This is how a swimmer stays balanced in the water. You have four quadrants from your fingertips to your head, to your back, back to lower back, and then your legs. Those are your four quadrants. Most people who swim with their arms back here will find their legs sinking, find it really hard to swim. But if you can kick with your arms straight out in front of you, called superhero kicking, you're gonna find yourself able to balance really easily. And when we start adding in the arms, it's gonna come a lot quicker. Okay, so you're just gonna kick as far as you can till you need more air to come up, take a breath, and put your head back down and keep kicking. If you can make it the whole way, go ahead and go the whole way. Ready, go. Very good. How'd that feel? <laughs> Interesting, right? Now, right now I had you hold your breath on purpose. Normally, I would recommend everybody does not hold their breath when they swim. You don't want to hold your breath when you run, when you bike, when you exercise or weight lift. So you don't really want to hold your breath when you swim, but I had you holding your breath because I wanted you to focus mostly on just the arms out in front. <coughs> now, I'm gonna tell you to lift your head and get a breath long before you ever need it. About every three seconds. Lift it. We're gonna do the kick for nest. It's essentially what you were just doing, but you're gonna be able to keep your head up above the water the entire time and breathe. And so we're gonna get you, your body to sink into the water a little bit, let it just dip down as far as it needs to, and then start kicking. When I saw you kicking without the board just a moment ago, there was one moment where I saw like your head was a little bit too high above the water, which might make you feel like you're sinking down. So I wanna reestablish the fact that water is like being on the moon. I want you to let the water, just take you. Just let the water take you. Just stay in the air. By floating, or by kicking with the kickboard, we're gonna allow the water to, to, to engulf you, and then you're gonna kick out of it. Keep it up, just kicking, let the water engulf you. Your shoulders might even dip underwater, doesn't matter, they don't have to, but they might. Breathe a lot. Good. You're controlling your own breath in the water. You're feeling how the water, simply because you have air in your lungs. Okay, good. So whenever you start off working out on your own in the water, I'm gonna have you always start on the kickboard for two reasons. One, your legs usually take about twice as long to warm up as your arms do. That's why you feel really good at the end of a run, but never at the beginning. And two, you wanna stretch your body line out in the water, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. The more uh, long you are in the water, the more uh, buoyant you are. So if you are, uh, it's like surface area. If you're tight, up, tight in, a, in a small ball, you're gonna sink sooner. If you're laid flat out in the water, you'll float sooner. You'll float easier. So people who swim without stretching all the way out, I like to tell them when you are walking throughout the day, gravity pulls down on your spine just a little bit, making you about half an inch shorter. When you go to bed at night, you're horizontal, so you're able to regrow. Now, adults, we just regrow back to the same height we were the day before, but kids regrow and then some. Now, as adults, and as kids, I guess, the other opportunity you have to stretch out, stretch your spine and grow is when you're in the water, because there's little snow gravity and you're horizontal. So on the kickboard, I always start people off on the kickboard for two reasons. Get those legs warmed up and stretch your body line out. See how long you can swim. 
because when we take the kickboard away and start adding in strokes, you're gonna want to be swimming as long as possible. You'll notice it makes everything easier. It engages your core. If your arms aren't all the way stretched out, your core is not engaged. And if your core is not engaged, you'll, your legs will get tired way faster. So stretching out in the water, and I like to say the secret to a good kick is in the arms. Stretch out the arms. Ready? Go. Okay. So now we're going to bring in the, the head position and that breath again. So you're gonna start with your head on the board, but pick it up about every three seconds before you even need a breath, just to get air deposited back in the water. We're almost done. We're gonna start moving to the side next, breathing to the side next. So, so yeah, now you're gonna have, I like to put my forehead down. So if you have your forehead down, you, it might be like right into the board, but when you lift it up, you'll notice that you can use the board to kind of push down a little bit. Not that I want you to, technically you shouldn't, but most people, yeah, it's supposed to push the board forward, but naturally, some people will push it down a little bit, and it helps you get your breath. It's not the end of the world. I'm not going to be like, ah, don't do that. You know, it, it's not going to ruin the whole drill or anything like that, but it makes it easy. Go ahead. You want your head almost completely submerged underwater when you swim. The only thing that might be sticking out is the back of your head, maybe your back, the straps of your goggles, but you don't want the majority of your head out of the water. Too many people swim, especially adults will swim like this with their face barely in the water. And if you're picking your head up by using the back of your neck, the muscles in the back of your neck, if you're using your neck to lift your head up even just a little bit, it's going to cause the rest of your body to sink. So you actually kind of want to drop your head into the water and let it just float naturally as if your body was in a neutral position as you were standing. Same thing when you're swimming. So allow a little bit of water to flow over the back of your head and that's when you know you've kind of got your head in the right position. It doesn't have to stay flowing. It might start to pick, come up a little bit but it shouldn't come all the way back up. So on this 25, you have more space now to drop your head completely submerged underwater. Okay. Now we're gonna teach Mark how to get his breath to the side. We'll start with the pineapple drill. The pineapple drill is how you roll from your belly all the way to your back to get a breath. And the reason you should learn how to roll all the way to your back to get a breath is twofold. One, so that in case you're ever in trouble in the water, it's better to just float on your back and wait for rescue rather than trying to tread water straight up and down. Number two, developing the muscles required to roll all the way to your back will then allow you to just roll halfway to the side. It'll make it easier. Essentially, you're gonna develop muscles to do more than they have to do so that when you're, when you're asking them only to do half as much, it's way easier, way easier. So here's how it works. You'll be on your belly floating with your arms all the way out in front of you. When you hear me say roll, you're gonna elbow the air with one elbow and then extend the hand out to the side, okay? If you just elbow the water, you're gonna end up sinking here. So elbow and then extend and get that hand back in the water but on the other side of your body, okay? So arms have to go from in the water to back in the water on the other side. Watch. Okay, it's very important that this arm gets in the water so that I can stay on my back. If it's still out of the water, I'm, I'm sinking. Okay, you're gonna try that now. It's just a basic float and roll. Go ahead. Good. Okay, rolling to your back. Get your chin up higher than your forehead, like this. If your head's up like that, you'll scream. If your head's up out of the water, it's pushing you down, which makes it harder to stay up. Build that chin back, go ahead. Good, chin up, good. 
That was way smoother than the first time. So let's do that about two more times and then we're gonna use it with momentum. So I'll allow you to like pull into the breath. Good. One more time doing that. And when you get to your back, go ahead and clear any water that might be in your sinuses and breathe, breathe. Good, chin up, clear and breathe. Good. Okay, so now we're gonna go into taking a pull. So you'll push off the bottom or the wall, wherever you want. You're gonna push off, create a little bit of momentum, and then pull yourself into that full pineapple like this. And eventually you both arms might come down to your side, that's okay, because you're using momentum. But when you're traveling through water, your body rises. Any sort of momentum will cause your body to rise in the water. So by creating this little bit of momentum, you're gonna find it even easier than it was before. Good. So right before you roll to your side or as you roll to your side, I want you to blow the air out of your nose like a, like a whale is clearing out of its blowhole. Okay, okay so it'll look like this. blowing anything away because sometimes when you roll to the side, all that water that's on your face still kind of just seeps its way in. Breathing okay there? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, good. So the blowhole technique of clearing the water away from your face and getting pressure from inside and releasing it outside should keep any water or lingering droplets going up your nose or anything major from even going up your nose. Do that one more time. Chin is up, good. How's the breathing? Okay, good. Now you're ready to start doing a few strokes at a time. Now, when it comes to the freestyle pull, what you're doing is you're taking water that's in front of you and you're redirecting it backwards because the only way you move forwards in the water as a human is if you're redirecting water backwards. It's basic physics. The only way you're moving forwards is if you're redirecting water backwards. You've already established a kick, so you're moving water backwards with your legs. Now we're gonna move the water backwards with our pole. We're not switching away from the breath. We're still talking about the breath, but this is just a simple learning how to redirect water backwards to keep you moving forwards will help you stay higher in the water to make the entire breathing process easier. To learn it makes it easier by moving. So at first we might stay here and sit in one place and try to roll and breathe, but don't worry, once you get moving, it's actually easier. So let's try probably two poles and then a roll. So two poles and a pineapple, it'll look like this. Sit up. Good. Do that two more times for a total of three. Good. I heard your breath that time. It's getting clearer. Some people feel a little bit clunky when they're having to take it step by step, the, the roll, the clearing, the breath. But more, the more you practice, the more you'll find that, that magic connection that you feel like you're missing. You'll get that I can roll, blow, and breathe almost at the same time. It's like one fluid motion. That magic connection of things happening almost seamlessly or effortlessly. It happens over time with practice, just like walking. You don't think about every step when you walk. You're just walking. Your body remembers how to do it because you've done it so much. Swimming's the same way. Any of these techniques, any of these drills, if you can't master it in one day, that's probably because most people can't master it in one day. It might take you weeks or months. Keep practicing. The best way to get back to your belly after the pineapple is to take one arm and reach across your body and behind your body. Okay, so you're gonna go across and up back into another stroke. So I'll show you. You've already done two strokes. You're on your back, you're getting your breath. When it's time to go back to your belly, which it doesn't have to be one breath, you can take as many as you'd like at this point. You're gonna take one arm and you're gonna go across your body and behind you. 
Do another roll. Another pineapple. Another bread. Good. Nice. When you get on your back, you gotta keep the chin up, stay relaxed. Uh, right. When I teach little kids, I'll say chin up, belly up, and toes up. All three. Chin up, belly up, toes up, and that makes them kind of like wanna feel magnetized towards the sky. That's kind of what you're looking for. You wanna feel like there's a magnet in the sky kind of pulling you up out of the water. So you roll to your back, and you start getting magnetized up into the sky. Let's do that one more time. So now we're gonna go into the one arm pineapple. This is a progression, this is a step between the half pineapple and the full pineapple. It's where on the second stroke, I'm gonna have him extend his arm out in front and roll, keeping that arm forward. When he's ready to roll back, he's gonna roll back onto the arm. So earlier, he was rolling one direction and continuing to roll in that direction when he was done. But now we're gonna open and close the window. So when you open a window to roll onto your back, we're gonna close that window to complete the breath, okay? This'll get you used to starting to breathe to the side where you don't rotate all the way around, you just go half right back in. So one arm pineapple, I'll show you what it looks like. Extend one arm on the last stroke, push it forward and roll onto it. Okay, I'm gonna let Mark take a try. Yep. What yep. <laughs> you did it right, you did it right. You just had your head up too high, so it's gonna be hard for you to, to make the roll. Right. So when you get to your back, it's awkward to have one arm up. You feel off-centered or something. That's okay. Just keep reaching back farther and get your chin up. The extra stretch and keeping that chin back so your head is submerged underwater. When you're on your back, if you're lifting your head up out of water, your head's like a bowling ball, it's gonna sink you so fast whether you realize it or not. It's just harder to do what you're doing. Awesome. That was textbook. I mean, it might not have felt good to you, but from what, no, that, good. that I saw that too. You I was like, that, too? that was awesome. That was perfect. <laughs> click, you do yeah. that like 10 more times, all of a sudden it'll feel natural. Work. Now, when you roll to your back, I didn't I didn't hear air. Are you breathing? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Some people- It's just, it's a little shallow, like I said, and uh, I'm hoping good. by the next day or so as we're progressing, oh, it's to clear okay, up Because okay. it's you, just a little still shallow from the bang. So sometimes if you find yourself, man, I'm still so out of breath when I practice, I either you're, you're holding your breath too long be, between breaths, you don't need to be doing that, or two, you're not actually breathing. You just think you are because you're in water, so you're going through the motions, but you're really holding it. So make sure you're actually exhaling, actually inhaling. He is, he told me he is. So we're gonna uh, watch him do this one more time as he masters the one-arm pineapple, and then he's gonna be ready for a half pineapple. Sweet. All right, we are ready for the half pineapple. So this is breathing to the side. This is the end result. Now, at first I'll let you take more than one breath. So it's kind of like hand lead kicking. Hand lead kicking is just a drill where you have one hand extended the whole way and you're kicking. If you need a breath, you can breathe, but nothing changes. Your arms don't move. So we're gonna do, we're gonna morph that drill in with his freestyle now to, to achieve a two breath or a three breath half pineapple. Essentially, I'm gonna say, 
turn to the side, only halfway, don't roll all the way to the back, just turn halfway, extend that arm forward, and kick and breathe as much as you want. Breathe as much as you want. Eventually we'll limit it to two breaths, then we're gonna limit it to one breath, and that's your side breath. You're done after that. You've got it, you've mastered it, you've accomplished it. Okay, so here's how it's gonna look next, Mark. You're gonna take two arm strokes, and then you're gonna roll your head to, or you're gonna turn your head to the side, and I want you to breathe behind you. You don't have to roll all the way to your back. Your shoulder can just stay here. It doesn't have to come all the way back into the water. But right here, I want you to turn your head to the side and then look backwards a little bit. Breathe back here. The most common mistake swimmers make when learning to breathe to the side is that they'll lift their head in front of them rather than turning it slightly behind them. Okay, I'll show you. You might also have to blow away when you exhale because right here, there's a little bit of water near, near your face. You might have to blow a little bit just to keep the water away. But take as many breaths as you want, make them relatively aggressive because you're on your side and kick fast while you're breathing. Kick fast while you breathe. If you don't kick fast, your body will sink sooner. If you're kicking fast, your body will actually accelerate and come up in the water. I'm gonna give him the kickboard here so he'll actually be able to hold something when he turns his head to the side and it'll give him a lot more time and stability to get his breath. And then I'll take the kickboard away and again, he'll be able to master it much quicker. Now with something to hold on to, I can stay here a little bit longer, feels a little more comfortable, and then I'll resume. Good. The only thing I'm gonna change is that hand needs to be in the water. This back hand needs to stay underwater when you're breathing. If it's up here, it's pushing you down. It's working against you. If it's in here, it's not harming anybody. It will while you're swimming goes, that's like a thousand times better already. It's one more time, and if you'd like to try and go the whole way, I would say that was a good time. Okay. Because this kickboard one arm pineapple drill has been the most beneficial for you so far. And every time I feel, find that person's special drill that seems to work for them the best, we do it more. So the next thing we're gonna have Mark do is lose the kickboard and practice the same drill. Now I'm gonna have him use his imagination. I want him to actually pretend like he's still holding that kickboard. Not with his hand, but with the arm. Extending it forward, and when he's breathing, both arms are underwater, and his head is on his, his outstretched arm in front. Okay, so it's ear on your shoulder breathing. You don't have to glue it. If your ear comes up a little bit off your shoulder, that's fine. The idea is that you're not lifting your head out of the water and showing me your ear. I shouldn't be able to see your ear. Keep that ear underwater. Breathing with the majority of your head underwater is easier than you think. But when you lift your head out of the water, all of a sudden, your mouth is really close to the surface of the water. And now, you're dealing with unwanted and unwelcome water. But if you can stay fully elongated, stretched out, both arms underwater, head in the water, it's actually quite easy to breathe. I could do this without even kicking. Now, if you need to take a step back from that, you can try just hand lead kicking. That's where you're kicking with one arm extended, the other arm by your side, breathing when you need to, and just kicking like this. But we're gonna do hand lead series drills and all of that with Mark over the next few days. Today, I'm trying to help him get a basic rough sandblast understanding of the strokes. We're gonna refine everything, give him balance and body line over the next three days with the seven 
handmade series drills. That was absolutely insane. That last breath you took, that hand came out of the water, and that's what get, that's what did you in. You were like, okay, well, hold on, I need to stop, I need to regroup, reset. Mm -hmm. That's okay. But as soon as that goes wrong, you feel like you did something wrong. It's okay to stop yourself and reset. So now we're gonna use the keel. The keel is a good step between the kickboard, the hand lead kicking, and the, the actual swimming of the stroke. So the keel is this device created by Arena where you can hold it back here and it kind of gives you this catch up freestyle stroke, but it's like giving you him another thing to hold on to, something tangible to hold on to, so that when he stretches his arm out front and he starts breathing to the side, he can kind of use this to feel control. So the, having something tangible in his hand to hold on to when he turns his head to the side will give him more control or at least he'll feel like he has more control because of something holding on to something the keel is also used for other things like pull boy but we're going to use it primarily for catch up freestyle when we get rid of the keel he'll you'll see that he's able to keep this hand out in front of his head a lot longer it'll make it a lot easier for him two strokes two breaths two strokes two breaths and that you're just going to switch one arm at a time At first, you were breathing every four strokes. I know. At first, he was breathing every four strokes. I realized, uh-oh, I'm running out of air. It's too hard. He switched to two. Everything started looking a little bit better, became a little bit easier for him. If that's you out there and you're feeling like things are really hard for you, you're probably taking too many strokes between breaths. I'll say it again. Swimming should not be a, a sport of breath holding. Obviously, I'm not asking you to try to breathe underwater, but... You should be getting your breath long before you need a breath when you swim. That way you never find yourself at that oxygen deprived state. Uh, end of day one, we'll recap. We did basic floating, breath control. We learned how to do a full pineapple, a one arm pineapple and a half pineapple. And we learned how to do the catch-up drill where his hands keep meeting back up the top at either the kickboard or the keel. Those drills are a great way to start to get your feet wet, so to speak, and to help you understand how physics and water works um, and the differences between that and what you would do normally on land and how the water can make everything feel a little bit different. But if you manipulate it the right way, it'll work for you rather than against you. And like I said, it's like being in the water, like being on the moon. So, rocket to the moon! <laughs> hey guys, Johnny Rocket here. We're on day two with Mark. Yesterday we got him swimming a few strokes, breathing to the side, doing a full pineapple, a one-arm pineapple, a half pineapple. Today we're gonna start off with a warm-up to make sure his legs are both kicking equally and effectively. We're gonna go two 25s with the kickboard, Halfway, he's just gonna kick with his right leg, and then he's going to kick with both legs the rest of the way. On the way back, he'll kick with just his left leg, halfway, and then the rest of the way with both legs. Let's rock it.
gonna go into a little bit of review from yesterday. We're gonna talk about the full pineapple roll. We're gonna do a one-arm pineapple and then a side breath. And then today we're gonna move on into the hand lead series. The hand lead series is comprised of seven drills that give you balance and body line in the water. The balance is achieved by kicking harder and bigger and more consistently. The body line is achieved by keeping your chin tucked so that your head is neutral and then keeping that head still as your body swims. Because when you swim freestyle especially, it's very easy for your head to rotate with your body and you don't want that to happen. That would give you a, a poor body line. Keeping your head still and keeping your kick strong will keep you moving straight forward through the water efficiently. Uh, we're gonna push off the wall with your hands in front, bring them off to the side, roll all the way to your back, and do a little bit of kicking today on your back before you stop. Good, chin up, do a little bit of kicking. Good. And stop. Excellent, do the same thing back towards the wall. Good, tune up, breathe in, and stop. How should we kick on the back? So when you kick on your back, you're gonna kick water up to the surface, off the tops of your feet. You don't need to bring your feet up above the water, they can stay under the water. And you're boiling the water right at the surface. It'll look like the water is boiling. Your, your toes might peek up above the water a little bit, that's okay. The mistake that most adults make, however, is when they start bringing their knees above the water or their whole foot above the water because they think like freestyle, they're supposed to be kicking the water down. And that's not true. You want to be kicking the water up, up towards the surface, up towards the surface, up towards the surface. Now we'll do the two strokes. So you'll go one, two, roll all the way to your back, and then you can add in some paddles and kicks. Yeah, perfect. Okay, we're gonna do the one arm pineapple review next. For this, we're gonna go ahead and swim the entire length of the pool. So when you roll to your back with one arm extended, you don't have to roll all the way under your back. You can roll about 70, uh, 270 degrees. So your body, if you were on your back, your body would be on a 45 degree angle, but if you're on your belly, it's a 270 degree angle, I think. But when you're, on, when you're there, take as many breaths as you need to, and then when you put your face back in, just two more strokes. Do the same thing. Just lay, uh, lay on your side for an extended period of time for multiple breaths. Set. Remember that both arms are going in opposite directions like you're doing the T-pose. So superhero swimming, which is what you're trying to do, there's a couple of times where somehow your right hand had to go twice because the left right. arm got stuck or something. So uh, one thing you could try is catch up freestyle. It's just where your hands touch out front. It's just something to give yourself physical contact with to help Aim I think for that's a target. What's happening. You're messing up the rhythm. It was the rhythm got messed up. I saw it too. So go ahead and tap your hands. That way, it's like you're forced to keep them up on uh, the surface. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Hand tag. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna use the keel again to help re-coordinate the strokes to where they have purpose. Remember, your poles are like your paddles. You're redirecting water behind your body. You're taking the water from in front, moving it behind, that moves you forward in the water. Front quadrant swimming is where you have your arms out in front of you, balancing your body in the water so that you don't get tippy backwards or you don't get tippy sideways. That out there in the front helps balance you. The keel even more so. Quick reset usually does the trick, no problems. Some people get frustrated, they think, oh, why couldn't I do this 
Why can't I do the say I was able to do it yesterday? Just reset, it's okay. Just do a drill that works for you, do a different stroke, get back in the water if you have to, whatever. Just reset, no problem. All right, so we're gonna start off the hand lead series with the first drill. It's called head lead kicking. It's just like it sounds, the name describes the drill. Your head is leading the way the entire time. Your arms will be by your side. Now, we never, ever wanna swim with our head leading the way, so why would we drill with our head leading the way? It's actually just to eliminate any other distractions so you can focus on your head position. Is your chin tucked? Is your neck stretched forwards? Are you swimming as tall as possible? And is your head still? Are you keeping your head still? All he's gonna do is kick with his arms by his side if he needs a breath. I'm gonna have him roll all the way to his back for a breath and continue head lead kicking on his back. So it'll look something like this. That roll from belly to back without your arms is gonna be a little more difficult. You're gonna find yourself, your face probably going underwater when you get to your back. So my recommendation is that you kick stronger when it's time to roll. As you go into the roll onto your back, get those legs churning because the more speed you have, the higher your body rises in the water. Just like a boat, when it picks up speed, it rises in the water. Your body is like a boat. So for the next drill, the second drill of the hand lead series is hand lead kicking. Now for him, he's gonna have to do two lengths of this, this drill because we're gonna do the right hand leading the way on the way down and the left hand leading the way on the way back. Now this drill is also in the name. Hand lead kicking means one hand is gonna lead the way, the other hand will be by your side like it was before in head lead kicking. You're still on your, on your belly, but you're gonna be a little bit more rotated onto your side with this drill. With head lead kicking, you're pretty much flat on your belly. With hand lead kicking, you're rotated onto your side a little bit, just because naturally your body rotates when you stick one arm out in front, especially if you're doing it correctly, which would be extending your hand in, far, uh, in front of you as far as possible. You'll roll onto your side a little bit. Now this time, the breath is easy. The breath is easy. You're gonna breathe to the only window that's open. You can't really breathe into the arm that's extended because that's a closed window. So you're gonna breathe into the window that's open. And if, you're, if, you're, if you need a little extra help, remember when you breathe to kick faster. And then some adults would like to do this little cheating Finding Nemo stroke. I'm okay with that at first when you're beginning because it gets you a little extra momentum through the breath. But just know that that repeated pull over and over again is making you go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So it's not really efficient. It won't be as smooth but it might, you might feel like it's helping you, and if it does, that's okay. Go ahead and try it for a while, and then get rid of that little cheating Finding Nemo stroke. I call it the, the, the gimpy fin stroke. Done really well, your kick will be side to side. You won't be splashing. But at your beginner stage, it's okay to splash a little bit at the surface to rough up the water. That just means you're more flat on your belly than you are on your side. That's okay. I normally like to go mix in a little bit of freestyle just so you can feel the benefits of the drill. Plus it'll allow you to use your arms again and give you the legs a break. Yeah, for sure. The hand lead series drills are not easy. If a, if a coach makes them look easy, that's just because they're majorly balanced in the water. But the Hanley series are, uh, drills are hard because it forces you to balance in the water. We're eliminating a lot of things that help you move forward in the water and help stabilize you. We're purposely throwing you off balance a little bit to make the right muscles engage to, to keep you balanced. So that when you start swimming freestyle again, all of a sudden you're gonna feel like everything's easier and smoother. And you're gonna be like, well, how'd that happen? You develop the right muscles. You develop the muscles that are supposed to be used to help you move through the water. 
as opposed to using your normal muscles that you use in your everyday life when you're grocery shopping or packing or whatever it may be. So now we're gonna mix in some 25s freestyle in between these drills to help him feel the benefits of the drills. For instance, on head lead kicking, we gave him a better head position. So on this 25 freestyle, I'm gonna tell him to think about his head position. Is it still? Be aware of what your head is doing. Is it still? When you're breathing, are you kicking harder through the breath? Are you keeping your head kind of in line with your spine? It's okay if your head turns out of your spine a little bit, but for the most part, are you keeping everything moving together in unison? So you're gonna swim freestyle. You're gonna swim the full stroke. Your hands will be in front of you. Every two strokes, I want you to take a breath. And if you need, since we're getting into this kind of deep here, take two breaths still. When you turn to the side, two strokes, two breaths. That'll give you more oxygen to be able to survive this, this, this workout today. Your stroke looks really good today. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday it looked uncoordinated, today it looks smoother. Good. Yeah, the drills are helping. The drills are giving him that balance and that body line in the water. He might not realize it yet because he's still at such a beginner stage in his swimming that he everything's hard, everything's tiring, everything's complicated. That's okay. If you feel that way too, that's okay. Just keep practicing, and if you feel overwhelmed, start breaking it down. Just work, work on one or two drills for a few weeks. He's getting the whole nine yards because we have him here for four days, so I'm trying to take him through as many drills and as many concepts as I can and then I'm gonna send him home, having him break down what we worked on and pretty much just for, focus on the things we worked on day one for a couple of weeks and then day two for a couple of weeks. You kick kind of with your right leg flexed, like you're doing a little breaststroke kick. Try pointing your toes. Try pointing your right foot, the toes on your right foot, see if that helps. The third drill in the hand lead series is hand lead to head lead. This is a combination of the first two drills. You'll start in hand lead and when you need a breath, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pull with that hand. You're gonna pull with that hand and breathe to that side. So if I'm starting off with my right hand, I'm kicking, I'm kicking, I need a breath, I'll pull first, breathe to that side, and now I'm in head lead kicking. I'll extend the right arm out in front of me, or the, the other arm out in front of me, which at this point is my left arm, and I'll repeat the process. I need a breath, I pull first, then breathe, Face back in the water, extend the next arm up. I'll show you guys what it looks like. I think you're doing all right. No, nah, it looks good over here. Okay. He's got the, the recovery uh, down. Doing hand lead to hand lead. Hey, you know what? That's good. Just keep doing that. Oh. It's hand lead to hand lead. Slightly different drill, but it works. So the hand lead to hand lead drill is is the fourth drill in the hand lead series. That's what we've got him doing right now, and it works. The hand lead to hand lead drill cr creates a connection with your rotation. The purpose of the hand lead to hand lead drill is to create a connection with the rotation. So you start your pull after this hand already begins to take the other hand's place. Once it's right in front of your face, you're gonna pull and switch. Let the other hand come up in front of your face, pull and switch. Let the other hand come up in front of your face, pull and switch. So you're rotating and connecting the pull so that you feel like your body is mechanical, kind of like a machine. Oh, yeah, you got it. I almost had it there real quick. You almost had it there for a moment accelerating really fast. Kicking in water is a little bit different than what most, most coaches will tell you to keep your legs straight, don't bend your knees. 
I don't like that advice. I found that a little bit of knee bend helps create that whip motion like Indiana Jones's whip. So sure, your kick might start up here in your hips or, or in your core and travel down through your knee, but if your knee is straight, you're basically just moving water up and down with a leg. That doesn't do anything. You're trying to kick water backwards. So you're gonna have to bend your knee so that eventually you can get water to fly off your foot and travel backwards. Otherwise, you're just creating the same amount of ripple effect forwards, backwards, sideways if your leg is straight. Bend your knee, kick the water away from you. Get it behind you. Accelerate yourself forwards. Oh yeah. Yeah. There you go. He's still running a little <laughs> bit. He's still running. The action is much better. At first it was perfect, and then I saw what you were talking about. You started running a little bit, so just keep pushing down. Keep pushing down. Pushing down and maybe even backwards, like push your foot away from you. Woo we got it. That's what I was looking for. It, 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 the connection was made when all of a sudden it looked fluid, like he was letting his feet dance and his legs were doing all the work, as opposed to before with his straight knees and his one flexed foot, it was more of a, uh, like a robotic, uncomfortable looking feeling. But now it looks fluid. It looks like he's gonna be able to travel faster with less effort too. So the third drill of the hand lead series, that hand lead to head lead, we're gonna try that again at the end of the hand lead series. The fifth drill, we're moving on to the fifth drill of the hand lead series. The fifth drill of the hand lead series is one arm to hand lead. This is a lot like a fancy one arm freestyle. The only difference is after you take a pull, Extend the hand out into the hand lead position and kick again until you need another breath. So it's kind of like with the hand lead series, you don't want to be rushing through any of these drills. It's a lot, a lot of times it's wait until you need a breath, then execute the switch of whatever kind of switch you're doing. For this drill, you're doing hand lead kicking with the right arm. When you need a breath, you're going to pull with the right arm, breathe to the right side, and then extend it back out into hand lead. Now your left arm will remain by your side the entire way. You're just swimming with one arm and you're just kicking with that same arm. So imagine that there's a rope tied around your waist, keeping this arm by your side the whole way. Now the benefit of this drill is to help someone rotate with just one arm to pull. Whereas later when we add in both arms, it's actually significant easier to rotate. So this is kind of a rotation drill, helping a swimmer rotate with less balance in the water. We're, we're kind of making them a little bit imbalanced again. Watch again. you got it a lot easier. Folks out there, if you are finding yourself not mastering a drill real quick, switch to something else. Here's why. When, you're, when your brain is learning something new, it's starting to store it as memories. When you leave and you try something else, it's called decompressing. Your brain is now storing what you've worked on as a memory, and when you come back to it, when you recall it to the forefront of your mind, you're gonna understand it better, because it's kind of like you're reviewing it. So if you find yourself getting stuck on a drill or a certain technique, switch to something else for the rest of the day or for a few minutes, come back. If it still doesn't work, switch to something else again, and keep coming back to it. Because relearning it, learning it one time and getting frustrated with it not working, isn't gonna do you much good. Yeah, I want you to keep practicing. Don't get frustrated, be patient and practice. Those are Coach Mike at Nitro's rules. But don't stay on the subject if you feel like you're just hitting a wall or a rut. You're, you can't get past it. Switch to something else, come back to it. This works as well. Yep, you bleed to that side, yep. 
Wait, other arm. Alright, sweet. We're gonna mix in a 25 freestyle now. Giving him both of his arms back, he's gonna feel pretty incredible. He's gonna feel really strong. He's gonna feel like he has control again. Sixth drill of the hand lead series. This is the this is gonna be the hardest drill for you competitive swimmers out there, but for adults, it's not as bad. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, the way it works is, it's called hand lead claw. One hand is in the hand lead position, the other hand is above your head, stuck in the middle of a recovery stroke. It's like frozen. Kinda of looks like a ballerina, kinda of looks like a shark fin, kinda of looks like a sailboat or a bow and arrow, but the correct way to do this drill is with this above hand forwards. Don't let that hand creep behind your head and start kicking like this. Keep that hand up here about to enter the water. I'll show you what it looks like. Done really well, your, your armpit will be above your ear. Switch arms when you need a breath. So you're in this hand lead position with one hand leading the way, you're kicking with your face down, you need a breath, time to switch. Breathe, and then resume the hand lead claw position on the other side. You need a breath, switch. Breathe, now you're on the other side again, okay? It's kind of like a weird looking freestyle. do I see that drill done that well on, just on a first try. If you're out there and you, you saw what I just saw, give that drill a try, send me your footage. I wanna see other people doing that drill. That is incredible. That's the most beneficial hand lead drill in the whole series. Because with that arm above the water, it's pushing you down, you're sinking. So you're required, whether you realize or not, to kick harder just to keep your body up. And when you kick harder, you have more control, you're stabilized, you're balanced, and your body comes up in the water. With that arm pushing you down, stretch forward, stay strong, stay firm in the water, stay tough, stay tight, get yourself back up to the surface of the water like he just did, that was awesome. The hand knee claw drill is gonna make his freestyle feel so easy, he's gonna feel like he's skating through water because with that hand above, above, above him on the hand knee claw, he was being sunk, it's kinda like swimming through mud, it's gonna be a little bit uncomfortable, now he's gonna feel super long and smooth. Seventh and final drill of the hand lead series is catch up freestyle. Now I hadn't told Mark about this yet because I wanted it to be a pleasant surprise for him. He's already learned catch up freestyle. In fact, catch up freestyle is one of the most common drills. It's probably the most common freestyle drill in all of swimming. Wherever you go in the world, catch up freestyle is the most common. It's where your hands tap out front. One hand has to catch up to the other before the other one's allowed to take its pull. It's part of the hand lead series drill because it keeps one hand out in front of you at all times in that hand lead position. When you re swim regular freestyle, it's gonna be a lot like catch up. I call it superhero freestyle. Your hands are side by side. They don't have to touch, but they will come side by side. For now, I'm gonna have him touching, thumbs. Some people slap, some people tap thumbs. Doesn't matter, whatever you do, just so long as you're not crossing your arms or doing anything crazy. Just a simple tap. He'll go two strokes and a breath, two strokes and a breath. All right, 
right, well, that's the seven drills of the hand lead series. We are going to touch back on drill number three now that he's a little bit more um, comfortable in the water. He's more coordinated after all the drills. We're going to go back and touch on that third drill, that hand lead to head lead drill. It's a very complicated drill, no problem. I'm going to have him swim a 25 freestyle first just so that he can swim that superhero stroke now without having to touch his hands every single time like catch up. He's going to feel really really smooth. I know all of you out there are already seeing what we're seeing, which is tremendous progress. Don't forget, we're still on day two of four. The hand lead to head lead drill. You start off in hand lead kicking. And then when you need a breath, you're going to pull both that arm down to your side. So both arms are going to be by your side. You take a breath to the side and you put your head back in the water. Once you've completed the breath, now you extend the next arm and repeat the process. Pull first, breathe second, head lead kicking third. Pull first, breathe second, head lead kicking third. Do as many as you can. If it doesn't come together today, that's okay. We can still try it again tomorrow. <laughs> Into the breath. So if you're pulling with your right arm, you're gonna breathe to the right side. So pull first, breathe. So I'd be this way then. And then it can extend that arm up. Now pull with the left arm, breathe to the left side. Good. Good. Right arm up. Okay. It's, it's clicking. Hey guys, Johnny Rocket here for day three with Mark. We have been crushing it these last two days. He has learned not only how to be more balanced with a better body line in the water through the hand lead kicking drills we did yesterday, but even getting that side breath on one of his first attempts on uh, two days ago when we first started. He's making absolute incredible progress. Today we're gonna talk about the arms. We're gonna help him get going with the, the proper pull. Now, Every stroke has three components to it, the pull, the kick, and the breath. For freestyle, the pull itself also has three parts. You have the initial catch out front, you have the push through the back, and then you have the recovery portion. We're gonna talk about the catch first. I'm gonna help him with the catch first through a drill called the OK drill. Now first we're gonna warm up, but once we've warmed up, we're gonna do the, and reviewed a little bit, we're gonna do the OK drill, then the pistol drill, and then we're gonna do the zipper drill. So three drills today to help him get his go arms going really well. Let's go swim. So on the way back, you'll have your head down on the board and only lift it for one breath at a time. The reason I'm having him only lift his head for one breath at a time is because when you breathe to the side in freestyle, you don't have a lot of time to get multiple breaths. Your arm's gonna come around too soon and cut your breath short. So to get good at breathing, only needing one breath at a time, I like to include that in our warm up. Yeah, you're on a kickboard, you don't really need to put your face in the water, but why not? Why not get that next step going? Practicing, getting your head, your brain connections used to only intaking one breath at a time. We're gonna review two of the hand lead series drills with Mark today. The first drill we're gonna review is the hand lead kicking. I like this drill because it makes it hard on the legs. You don't get a lot of pull. And so your body stays, your body is feels pretty imbalanced in this position, especially because you never get any pulls to kind of help create momentum and balance in the water. You don't get any of that. It's just hands, one hand out in front, the other hand by your side, face in the water. If you need a breath, breathe to the open window, but only take one breath at a time.
And as a reminder, for those of you out here who are still wondering, do you breathe through your mouth or your nose? In swimming, you should always try to get to a full mouth breath because you don't want to be using your nose to, to sniff in at all. Your water droplets, actual water, things can go very wrong if you're breathing in with your nose. So whenever you're in the water, breathe in with your mouth. Now, if you're someone who gets water up their nose frequently, then you're gonna breathe in through your mouth and out through your nose. So it's the opposite of like a yoga breath. You're gonna breathe in with your mouth, out with your nose. In with your mouth, out with your nose. Already, even after yesterday, He's more on his side, and more importantly, what I've noticed is his body is coming up in the water, up in the surface. The best swimmers in the world swim with more of their body above the surface of the water than below. The reason for that is because there's less resistance in the air than there is in water. So to get a swimmer to be able to, to swim through the water normally is great, but getting them to swim with their body almost halfway out of the water is something else. That's a lot more difficult to to master, but it's a lot more efficient of a swimming style. Usually it comes with endurance, repeating drills over and over again. And so he was kicking on the kickboard, now he's doing handling kicking, I'm already noticing his body's halfway out of the water. That's so important that they actually started making those full body suits back in the day. They started making full body suits that were sucking in air to keep people higher in the surface of the water and make them more buoyant. They were becoming a lot like triathlete suits or open water suits. So they banned them and said, you know what? Not everybody's allowed to have that permanent, easy Michael Phelps body position. So they banned the suits and now everybody has to work twice as hard to get that same body position back. Second drill we're gonna do today the re to review from what we worked on yesterday will be the hand lead claw. Now, I mentioned yesterday that the hand lead claw is the most beneficial drill in the hand lead series because it pushes you down in the water so much. I was gonna do a different drill until I saw how high he's riding in the water today. And that just tells me that probably the hand lead claw drill from yesterday is one of the big benefactors helping him do that. So. We're gonna have him do that drill again with one arm leading the way, the other arm is above your head in the claw position or the sailboat, whatever you wanna call it. About to enter the water, but not. You stay here, some coaches teach you to stay here for six kicks, six seconds, whatever. I usually say just stay here till you need another breath because I found that kids like to hold their breath, adults like to hold their breath, everybody seems to like to hold their breath even though in swimming you're not really supposed to. People do it anyway and it gives you enough time then to get to be sunk, to come back up with your kick, kick harder to get back up to the surface, and then switch. Now you're here, you're gonna sink a little bit, you're gonna kick harder to get back up, and you're gonna switch again. That's gonna improve your balance and your body line in the water. If you recall from yesterday, when I started the hand lead series, I said the hand lead series is designed to give you balance and body line in the water. Balance is achieved by kicking stronger, consistently, and having control of the kick. Body line is achieved by stretching your head forward, keeping your chin tucked a little bit, and your head completely still. Anytime you need a breath, you'll just switch. Gotcha. People ask me, where do you get the breath? Where do you get the breath? You get the breath right after you make the switch. So watch me. Okay, right after you make the switch, you're going into the breath and then resume the drill. A lot of you guys watched my Pamela video and you thought to yourself, well, she already knew how to swim or she's not a beginner. It's funny, Pamela actually started with me online, doing online swim lessons. And we did that for almost a year before she came to me in person. By the time she came to me in person, she already had a pretty good freestyle stroke. A lot of you are right, right? But there were some things that she was missing, connections that weren't being made that she needed to come in person to get down. 
So we were able to take her from a semi-beginner freestyle to more of an expert freestyle that she can then use to improve for a long period of time. Now Mark just brought up something he said, this is what went wrong, that went wrong. I don't always know what's going wrong when a swimmer swims. And so having that feedback is very, very helpful. If you feel the same way, it's okay to stop, reset, and go again. Because if things are gonna go wrong, there's not everything's gonna go perfectly for you. And so sometimes you'll just need to do a few of the strokes, reset, and do a few more. And that's totally okay. You'll see yourself progressing faster over time. Mark has never taken an online swim lesson with me before. In fact, two days ago when we did our first lesson, that was his very first swim lesson with me. So a lot of you guys are gonna like this, what you see. This is a very beginner type person going into what is now a, a master of the seven hand lead series drills. If you find like the hand lead kicking drill is pushing you down too fast that you don't have time to get your breath, then go ahead and take the pole, but leave your hand in the water like you're doing hand lead kicking. Get your breath and then bring that arm up above your head. I saw Mark do that a couple of times and it gave me that really good idea, a good modification to the drill. Some of you guys are struggling to get your breath because that drill pushes you down so quickly back under the water that you might not have time for a clean breath. If that's the case, or if you need an extra breath, like two breaths, just stay in the hand lead position a little bit longer, breathe, and then bring that hand back up over your head. I'll demonstrate for you right now. done with warm up, done with review. We're moving on to the first drill of the day. It's the okay drill. You're gonna make the okay sign with your hand and you're gonna pull regular freestyle. And what you'll feel is a little bit infuriating, but what you'll feel is your hands will be able to pull just normally out front because when you catch in freestyle, you wanna catch in the pressure to be on the outside three fingers. So the pressure on the catch will come as you kind of pull towards your body a little bit, pressure being on these outside three fingers. And then as it comes back, we'll talk about that next because the pressure changes. But for now, we're just talking about the, the catch out in front. We're gonna do something called a high elbow catch from now on. So a high elbow catch is something that we kind of started doing, uh, I don't know, a few decades ago. but. Katie Ledecky is the world's greatest high elbow catch swimmer ever. She has such flexible shoulders and elbows that when she pulls, her elbow almost remains completely at the surface. It's absolutely bonkers. It's also called an early vertical forearm because your forearm goes vertical underneath the surface of the water. This is your paddle, this is your oar. It's kind of like creating an anchor out front and then pushing through the back. Once again, we'll talk about the push through the back in a second. Right now, we're still talking about the pull, the catch out in front. This is the first part of three parts to the freestyle catch, the pull, the push, and the recovery. The pull is out front. It needs to be a high elbow catch. You're always traveling in the direction of the back of your hand. So when your hand enters the water, you're not pulling, but as soon as you start pulling, you want that hand to start anchoring a little bit, and then you want the elbow to follow suit, and then you'll push through the back. Okay, so it's kind of like going over one of those giant exercise balls that you would see in gyms. It's kind of like going over one of those. Okay, so we're gonna do the okay drill. I want you to not worry about how, how frustrating it feels when you slip water. Just focus on how good it feels when you catch water with these three fingers out in front, okay? So I'm still swimming kind of like a superhero, catch up, something like that. If you want to do this catch up, you can. It might make it easier, might make it harder. Should make it easier. But you're swimming, just normal freestyle, but your hands are doing something else. How did that feel? Did it feel frustrating? Did it feel like a drill that you can see where it's going? 
Not at all. Uh, it just felt like you weren't, like you're only pulling with like half your hand. Half your hand, yeah. So another popular drill, like when I was a kid, was like to give kids tennis balls and make them swim with tennis balls. Uh, that takes away the feeling of the entire palm and makes them try to feel it with their forearm. However, I have to say, to admit, in my career, doing that drill all the way through college, I actually never liked that drill, didn't find it that beneficial for me. I much prefer the okay drill and the pistol drill. So if you're someone who's been taught how to swim with fists, even though you probably do it with the bear claw, you've been taught how to do swim with fists, that's the same concept as holding a tennis ball. I just don't love it. I, other coaches just love it, they swear by it. Maybe I'm missing something, but I didn't, I never really felt like it was that beneficial of a drill. The pistol drill and the okay drill, now those are excellent drills. Sometimes if you need a reset while doing a drill, that's okay, stop and reset. Over time you'll notice though that you, you can recover without having to reset. Mark's starting to pick on, up on that. He just recovered from an, a wonky breath, recovered instead of resetting. That's totally fine. If you need to reset, reset. If you think you can recover, go for it. Go ahead and try to recover. It builds more con connections, builds a little bit of coordination. It's, it's good. We're opening up his hands now, full freestyle stroke. He's gonna feel really, really good. He's gonna like this a lot. open up your whole hand, you've only been pulling with half the weight you normally do. And when you open up your whole hand, you're pulling with all that weight. It, it makes the water feel heavier. You'll start to appreciate how when you glide through the water, it has nothing to do with what's happening up here. It's not jamming your hand out front. It's all about pulling backwards. That pulling of the heavy water moves your vessel, your body, over the surface of the water. The only way you move forwards in the water is if you're redirecting water backwards. You do that with your kick. When I kick, you'll see the, the ripples go away from my feet backwards. So that moves me forwards. The other way I move forwards in the water is when I pull. That moves my body forwards. So the best swimmers in the world are always focusing on like a skate take technique. They are like skating as if they were on ice. One foot is pushing while the other foot is gliding. They push with the back foot, glide with the front foot. Push with the back foot, glide with the front foot. Same thing in swimming. You're gonna pull with one arm and glide with the other. Watch me. done you handled it well you kept both arms underwater until you had caught your breath that's really good you need an extra breath you can either do a full pineapple or folks out there you can just like what he just did which is stay in hand lead position for a little bit longer get a couple more breaths and then keep going that's excellent now we're going to talk about the pistol drill the pistol drill is the second drill we're working on today it is usually married to the okay drill. So oftentimes if I'm giving someone the okay drill, I'll usually also be giving them the pistol drill in the same lesson. The pistol drill, you have these three fingers. So yeah, I know your middle finger is involved in both drills, but the pressure of the water when you push backwards shifts to the inside of your palms. So as you catch out front, your arm will be about directly underneath your body, halfway through its pull, when all of a sudden, you're not pulling anymore, you're pushing. And so you kind of got to know the difference on how that's going to feel on your palm. That's what the pistol drill is for. When you push back, you're going to push back 
with your fingers like this. You're gonna do the whole pull with your fingers like that. But I want you to flex your wrist when you get halfway through the catch, halfway through the pull, you're gonna then let your wrist flex as you push out back. The reason that you want your wrist flexed is because you're always traveling in the direction of the back of your hand. So if you were to pull through and then pull up, technically you're pushing your body down. There's no need for that. We wanna go forwards. We always wanna be traveling forwards. Fastest route between two points is a straight line, not a curvy line up and down or back and forth. So as you pull, you're flexing your wrist through the back of the stroke. That's gonna allow you to really push water straight backwards the entire pull. Now, this is kind of a new development, this flexed wrist technique. It hasn't been tied, it's not circulating around the world yet. In fact, I even saw a lot of Olympians still pulling the old way. But this flexed wrist technique is the best way, the most efficient way to finish off a freestyle pull. So for the pistol drill, I'll show you what it looks like. Don't worry about the catch out front. You're gonna feel like you're slipping a lot of water. That's okay. Just push all the way through the stroke. Push all the way back through the stroke, not up. I don't wanna see water flying up into the air. I wanna see it being pushed back, back, okay? All right, I'll show you what it looks like. So you'll see that I'm pushing really hard through the back of the stroke and flexing my wrist. The pistol drill, now that he's done it, I don't like to say anything regarding a, a drill or create any expectations in someone's mind, any, especially any negative expectations in someone's mind before they do the drill, but now that he's done it once and he just said, that felt weird, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Pistol drill is not as fun to do as the okay drill. The okay drill is a lot easier, it feels faster, it feels like you have more control. The pistol drill will start to make you feel a little imbalanced because it focuses on the back half of the pull. And the back half of the pole, once your arms are back here, you're not front quadrant swimming anymore. So trying to make progress back here is kind of infuriating. If I had you just pulling out front or just pushing out back, you would prefer to pull out front a lot more than just pushing out back. So that's why this drill doesn't feel so good, but it's still an important drill that helps people feel the water out back. It also helps people feel the difference now between the pull and the push. The pull feels a little bit different on your palm than the push does. And that's that feel of the water that we're creating. How did that feel? Talk to me more about it. Felt weird. <laughs> like you're slipping a lot of water. Yeah, and then I was just trying to get the feel while you're underwater to make sure I wasn't going up too high because it's hard to feel. So I tried to just go straight back. But it a is. couple times I know that I missed my breath so that I just held it and went a couple more strokes and then yeah. when I saw it close to the end, I just kind of looked through. Learning a new drill because drills are purposely gonna make things awkward, yeah, that'll happen. Breaths will fall apart, things right. will fall apart, and then all of a sudden they come back together. Right. gonna open up both of his hands what he's gonna find is he can really pull through the back so hard that it might like overshoot sometimes he might like fling his hand up into the air and it'll come back down and that's gonna be okay that's just the power of the drill it's creating a new feel for the water as you push through the back of your stroke full stroke freestyle open up your mitts use full hands he said already that he feels like when he opens up his hands, he can pull a lot more water. That's exactly what I've been telling you you should feel. Okay, if you're doing these drills at home, that's how you should feel when you open up your hands again. Here we go.
That was okay, guys. The third drill we're doing today with Mark is the zipper drill. We've done the okay drill to work on the catch, the pull, the front part of the pull. We've done the pistol drill to work on the push part of the stroke of the pull. Now we're going to talk about the recovery part. I want to start by saying don't ever give any effort to the recovery portion of the stroke. The recovery portion should be just that, recovery. You should be recovering from the pole, the exhausted, the exhausting part that is the pole. Your arm comes up, it's recovery. Therefore, what I'm trying to get at is, if you're a straight arm recovery person, that's fine. If you're a high elbow recovery person, that's fine. If you're somewhere in the middle like me, that's fine too. We used to think it really mattered what your arms looked like above the water. We thought it made a big difference. Then we realized it doesn't. It's the pole that's underneath the water that makes all the difference. It's like an iceberg. The majority of the work is done underneath the surface of the water. So what happens up here is not that important. So what I'll usually do is one drill to, to talk about recovery strokes just to get people aware of what's happening up there. And then after that, I tell them, now never think about it again. But the zipper drill, it, you're pretending to zipper the side of your body with your thumb. And then put your hand out in front, zipper the other side, hand out in front, zipper, zipper. So it's gonna keep your elbows kind of close to your body during the recovery portion of the stroke. That's okay. That's gonna help you, uh, it's gonna help lose a little bit of balance so that you'll, you'll be forced to, to tighten up his kick and to become more balanced, just like the hand lead series drills. But this zipper drill, the reason we're gonna do this instead of doing like a straight arm recovery is because a straight arm recovery is beneficial, especially if you're sprinting, but it actually can create a bigger pull underwater, which gets exhausting sooner. So I usually like to teach people the zipper drill so that when they put their hands in the water, they're already used to this elbow bending about that much, which when you're pulling, doing the front catch, it'll bend a lot. Now with this drill, there's not like, like the other two, there's not a lot of corrections I can make to it. It's kind of hard to mess this drill up. I'm just gonna ask him how he feels. And if he tells me something that seems like a red flag, I'll see how I can help him fix it. How'd that make you feel? It felt weird. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally, what that drill will do for you is create like a, 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 a more of a rotation in your body line so that when we swim as humans, we're actually more hydrodynamic when we swim on our sides, yeah, you cut through it. You cut through it, and half your body is now out of the water, right? So what this drill will hopefully help you do, I'll demonstrate the drill again, and then go into regular freestyle. So it's really just creating awareness of the arm that's in the air. It's just nice and easy. My hand is dangling. My wrist is is kind of loose. It's just an elbow that I bring up to the air and then let the hand kind of fall forward all on its own. So you're no longer really pausing very long for your breaths. You're way more efficient. You're getting the breath clear and easy before the arm comes around. So you're starting to look smooth. You're starting to look smooth like me. At this point, after all of these drills, Mark is starting to be able to sneak his breath in through the stroke. So instead of the stroke having to be paused for the breath, even if it was just one breath, it was usually there was usually a distinct pause happening. Well, on that 25, I saw Mark starting to just kind of swim smooth. The arms never really stopped, but the breath was snuck in to the stroke. I like that a lot. It's getting a lot smoother. He's getting more balance in the water. 
He's getting more confident and he's got the stamina and the body line up higher in the water. All of that's working together in his favor to give him that smooth freestyle that we just saw. One of the things Mark does because he's got a lot of power, he's a strong individual, is you'll notice that his recovery strokes don't look the same on each side. He doesn't have what we would call a symmetrical stroke. And that's okay, you don't need a symmetrical stroke. You'll find that most distance swimmers in the Olympics have a very lopsided stroke. One stroke is like a little bit quicker, the other stroke is a lot longer. And the stroke that, that's a lot longer is usually the stroke that they're breathing towards. And that's what Mark's doing, that's what I do when I swim. It's hard not to just kind of gallop a little bit. It's hard not to have this little giddy up in your stroke because when you turn to the side, you do want to be a little bit higher for the breath and you do want to have a little bit more power through the breath. So everybody kind of naturally gives more power during the breath and if they're not, that means they haven't been coached that way. So you need to learn how to kick stronger through breaths, pull a little bit stronger through breaths because breaths make your body sink a little bit. Now we're gonna put paddles on Mark. Now, most paddles will tell you which one is the left and which one is the right. Unfortunately, this particular pair of paddles doesn't say, but I've been in the sport long enough to know how they expect me to wear these. Paddles are like fins for your hands. They increase the surface area of your pull. So with that, you're gonna feel like you have a monstrous pull. He's got fins on too, so he's about to feel really good. Now, a little disclaimer here for you. If you find yourself feeling pain when you use paddles, stop using the paddles. Especially if that pain is in your shoulder or your elbow. That means you're putting some unnecessary stress in the wrong places. That could be because your technique isn't deficient enough yet. Or it could be that your body type is different and it's not gonna do well. Or it could be an old injury that's just gonna get irritated by the paddles. So just don't wear them until you've come to see me and we've really analyzed your technique to make sure paddles are safe for you. Now I've been watching Mark's stroke from above and below the water and I know that these won't hurt him. Now I'm still gonna have him tell me if they do, but I can almost guarantee they won't hurt him. He's got a lot of power. So the paddles are gonna create surface area that's gonna give you such a strong pull that he's gonna to start to realize you don't need your kick. And that's important because tomorrow is all about helping him not need his kick anymore. So now he's gotten a chance to use the paddles. He likes them, of course. We've also been doing a lot of pole drills today, so then to finish with giving him a little bit extra power is gonna feel great every time. If you're out there and you have a coach who trains you, great, follow his directions. But if you are someone who trains themselves, then I recommend kind of trying to follow a pattern similar to the one we've been doing this week. And that is start off with something a little bit more difficult, a little bit kind of hard to master, maybe it requires some coordination, move into something that's a little bit more enjoyable to do and finish with the most enjoyable thing that you can do. That way, every time you leave the pool, you're excited to come back. Always finishing, I like to finish with like fins, paddles, um, fast stuff, short fast burst stuff, or having swimmers go down the slide if I, there's a slide at the pool, whatever it may be. But always finishing with something more fun, more enjoyable for you to do is very key keep you sane. His stroke is looking very, very powerful now. I'm gonna have him do his first 50. For those of you who don't know, in normal regulation size swimming pools, from one end to the other is 25 yards or meters, depending on where you are in the world. And then two lengths of the pool would be 50. Three is 75, four is 100. Think of it as like having quarters in a dollar. If you had 25 cents, you'd have one quarter. Therefore, 25 yards is one length of the pool. 50 cents would be two quarters. 50 yards would be two lengths of the pool. So on and so forth. So we're gonna have him do his first 50. It's gonna make him fatigued, especially when I tell him at the other end, he's only allowed to take up to three breaths maximum before I want him to push off for a second lap. 
Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit hard, but what we're gonna see is his technique falls apart a little bit on the second lap, feels a little bit tired. All of a sudden, tomorrow, or the next time he just does a simple 25, it's gonna feel so easy. And he's gonna be actually be able to focus more on his technique because now we're pushing him, pushing his stamina and his technique farther, twice as much as we normally do. So it's gonna make the, the one lap drills that we do and the shorter swims that we do feel significantly easier. Nice work, man. Good work. Way to Good push, work. Mark. All right, we're concluding day number three with Mark. He learned several drills today. He did the okay drill. He did the, the pistol drill, the zipper drill, and we used paddles. We also did his very first 50 ever, and I expected his technique to fall apart a little bit. I expected the breath to have to, to slow down and, and take more inhales, but he didn't. He was able to keep that same fluid breath that we saw for the first time today on both laps. That's incredibly encouraging. It speaks to the testament of his, his work ethic, his discipline, his determination, and honestly, it also speaks to the power of private lessons, especially with a professional instructor who has now dedicated his life to being able to teach people more efficiently to not just regurgitate whatever my coach taught me, like all my other, I shouldn't say all my other, but like some of my other constituents. You gotta start experimenting for yourself. You swimmers out there, you can be your own coach. You start experimenting for yourself. Give me a call, FaceTime me, text me, email me. Get in contact with me. I can coach you from Austin. You can be somewhere else in the world. You can get someone to take a video of your stroke, send it over to me. I can analyze it for you, with you. That's how we do our online lessons. They're a very popular tool. You get the footage that I tell you to gather, you send it to me, I analyze it with you, I use my couch to, to demonstrate some things that I need to demonstrate. Sometimes I can even come to the pool and show you the things in the pool. But then I'll also write a workout or several workouts for you to, to take home with you that week. So if you're enjoying these, these videos and the progress that you see Mark make, hit me up, let's get started and let's change the way that you learn swimming. It'll work, it will. I have that much confidence in being able to, to take every single individual for the unique person that they are. Your body type is different. There's usually some, some guidelines that help, but when it comes to technique, there is no one size fits all. And if you have anybody out there telling you that, it's time to give me a call. Because <laughs> there's not one size fits all. Hey guys, Johnny Rocket here. We're on day four with Mark. He has learned how to go from not really knowing how to swim at all. I mean, he could tread water, he could stay afloat, but after that incident in the Bahamas, he wanted to learn how to actually swim efficiently, breathe to the side, things like that. You've seen the progress, it's been tremendous. On the first day we worked on the pineapple, the one arm pineapple and the half pineapple, the side breath. On day two, we worked on the hand lead kicking series drills, seven drills, head lead, hand lead, head lead to hand lead, hand lead, to hand lead, hand lead claw, and one arm to hand lead and catch up. Now, yesterday we did some pretty important work. We helped him engage the feel of the water with his hands, with the okay drill, the pistol drill, and the zipper drill. Now he's also been wearing fins the entire time. There's a reason for that. Fins make learning whatever it is you're doing in the water easier. When you have the fins on, every single kick is more efficient. 
technically it's harder. So if you find soreness in your shins or your ankles or blisters on your feet or your toes, make sure you wear socks or just take the fins off for a while. Let things heal up, try them again. Maybe you're just re-strengthening those muscles. But when you use fins in the water, you can learn things so much quicker. When I was a younger coach, I asked my mentor, who was my coach when I was really, really young, I asked her what was the one thing she wished she had done differently as a, as a younger coach. She said, wish I'd put fins on swimmers more because it makes it things easier to learn. It makes swimming more enjoyable. So if you're out there thinking, ah, it's, it's cheating if you're wearing fins, disagree. I disagree. I think you're wise to wear fins when you learn new things in swimming. Now, don't ever wear fins with breaststroke because when you wear fins on breaststroke, it puts the wrong pressure on the wrong parts of your joints. So it's not healthy for your hips, your knees, or your ankles to wear fins on breaststroke, but butterfly especially, backstroke, and freestyle, wear fins when you learn new things. Breathing to the side is so much easier when you have that extra power because like a boat that rises in the water as it picks up speed, your body will come up a couple of inches in the water when you're wearing fins. So it makes it easier to get that breath. Today, we're pretty much gonna send Mark home with the ultimate tool. He's gonna be able to be his own coach after today. We're doing something called stroke counting. Now, after we warm up and review all the things we've been working on, we're gonna talk about stroke counting. Stroke counting is how a swimmer can become more efficiently without another person telling them so. For instance, if it takes a swimmer 20 strokes to get across the pool, we would say that's pretty efficient. But what if that same swimmer could take 15 strokes to get across the pool? They only need 15. Well, that means the new them touches the wall while old them still has five more strokes. That multiplies exponentially when you're in a workout or a practice. So by counting your strokes, knowing that a lower number is more desirable, your body will now start to naturally fix the things it needs to fix. You're gonna start reaching a little bit farther. You're gonna start kicking a little bit stronger. You're gonna start keeping that body line a little bit taller. Everything will start to be more efficient because your body wants to achieve the goal of getting from one end to the other in fewer strokes. Let's go swimming. I need you to, I don't, we don't want to kick too fast. Actually, I want you to slow the kick down and let the ankles loosen up, floppy feet. Okay, let's see if we can get a flop your foot. That concludes our warm up. Very short, you don't need much, especially when you're learning techniques, doing drills, all that's kind of keeping you warming up the entire practice. So now we're gonna run through a review of the few drills that we've done. We're gonna skip through the pineapple drills. He's got them down. In fact, he's even getting better at doing it on his left side. So we're gonna go right to the hand lead series drills. We're gonna pick out three drills from the hand lead series. Now we might I just do a 25 of every single one. Then we're gonna go on to the three drills that we worked on yesterday, the okay drill, the pistol drill, and the zipper drill. And then today, we're gonna to talk about stroke counting with a fun game called SWALF, swim golf. You're gonna get your time and your stroke count and combine them for a score. And the lower you can keep your score, the more efficient of a swimmer you are. So it's not always just about taking the fewest amount of strokes because theoretically I could probably get across the pool in like six strokes, probably less. But that wouldn't mean, that wouldn't be going fast. Efficiency is going as fast as you can while using the least amount of energy to do that. So the game Swalf, taking your time, taking your, your stroke count and combining it for the score is an excellent way to see if you're getting faster and le taking less strokes. You're a more efficient swimmer. It's a great gauge for people to, to coach themselves and make themselves better. All right, so we're gonna start off with, um, I was gonna pick through two, you know, three drills. 
we're gonna go hand lead kicking first. So I want uh, right hand leading the way on the way down, left hand leading the way on the way back. And then when you need a breath, you just turn your head to the side, but kick a little faster through the breath. good to do a review of drills sometimes because one of the things I'm going to change in his drill today will help him in his stroke as well. When you're doing hand lead kicking and you lift your head to breathe, try not to bring your ear out of the water. Try not to lift your ear forwards. Try to keep the ear down and see if you can start breathing with half your head in the water. It'll be right hand leading the way, hand lead kicking, kicking faster when you breathe and trying to tip the top of your head down and keeping the ear in the water. That was a lot better. Now the reason it's important to tip the top of your head down, keep that ear in the water so your head is lower during the breath. Your head is the weight of a bowling ball, it's pretty heavy. So when you pick it up out of the water, every time even a small fraction of your body, any surface area, once it comes above water, it becomes significantly heavier because there's gravity, much more gravity above water than below the water. Remember, being in the water is like being on the moon. I could pick my feet up. As long as I got air in my lungs, I could float here all day. It's like being on the moon. There's almost no gravity. I can't sink. As long as I've got air in my lungs, I've got the built-in life vest, I'm always going to float. So with that concept in mind, when you tip your head down into the water, it relieves some of the weight that you're causing to press you down in the water. By keeping your head down, your body will float better. But once you start picking your head up, your body will sink. As long as I've got air in my lungs, maybe a little bit of dance from the feet, paddles, whatever. But watch what happens when I try to just swim with my head out of the water. It's a lot harder. My body sinks if I'm trying to lift my head up out of the water. Same thing on my back. I'll show you that too. You lift your head up on your back, you're end up sitting down in the water. So keep your head in the water when taking your breath on freestyle. And also remember that breathing to the side, that freestyle breath, that's a unique breath. Butterfly, you breathe in front of you, breaststroke, you breathe in front of you, backstroke, you don't have to hold your breath. So the unique breath is actually the side breath, the one that most people are trying to learn. Don't forget that that's actually a unique breath. All right, so second drill we're gonna do, uh, let's go one arm to hand lead. So the one arm to hand lead drill helps a swimmer make the connection with the rotation and the pull. It's almost like one arm swimming, but you only pull when you need a breath. So otherwise it's just hand lead kicking. So you're kicking in hand lead every time you need a breath, pull and breathe. And then resume hand lead kicking until you need another breath and repeat the process. So it's one arm, Breathe, kick, 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 kick till you need another breath and take the same pull, the same breath to the same side. This arm, the other arm will remain by your side the entire time. Somehow, your left arm looked better than your right arm on that drill. Okay, so the third and final drill I'm gonna have him review today is the hand lead claw drill. This drill is, in my opinion, the most beneficial freestyle swimming drill that there is. It really tests the swimmer's balance and their body line. 
So when you bring this arm up above your head, it's gonna push you down a little bit, and you're gonna have to kick harder to come back up. At that point, you'll probably be ready for your next breath, so you switch. And breathe. Then put your face back in the water. Your arm is up here. Here we go again. You kick yourself back up to the surface. Pull, switch. Breathe. Pause. Okay, I'll show you. you find yourself struggling to get a breath, then keep the arm underwater until you've got your breath, and then bring it up when you put your face down. That's if you're finding it hard to get that breath in time before your body gets, starts to sink back down. So some of you might feel something like this. and you feel like you're sinking too soon. So just keep that arm under the water and it won't press you down. Once you've got your breath, it's okay to take one or two while you do this drill and get better at the drill. And then put your face back down. Eventually you'll want to be able to get that one quick breath before your body sinks. That's ideal, that's where you're headed towards in this drill. and breathe at the same time, then your hand comes up when your head goes under. Trying to manage several different moving parts. Ooh. Yeah. That is definitely the best he's done that drill yet. All it took was a quick reset. Remember, when you're practicing and learning new things in the water, the three rules. Be patient, don't get frustrated, and practice a lot. It's okay to have a reset. Let's kind of actually take a peek at what your freestyle looks like after all these drills. So instead of doing hand lead claw again, since it's already involved both arms, let's just go into a 25 regular freestyle now. On to the third day of drills. We're gonna review all three real quick. We're gonna do okay drill down, swim back. Pistol drill down, swim back. Zipper drill down, swim back. These are what I like to call immediate application drills. It's where you, or IA drills. It's where you get to drill and swim within the same 50. So maybe you're doing hundreds where it's drill, swim, drill, swim. That would be an immediate application drill where you take the drill and instead of fixating on the drill, you say to yourself on the way back as I swim, I'm gonna try and feel the benefits of the drill. So understanding what the drills are doing for you is also helpful. about you folks watching out there, but he's looking smoother by the day. He's starting to look as smooth in his, in his drills as he did in his regular freestyle just yesterday. Yesterday we saw a big difference in the fluidity of his freestyle. Now we're starting to see that in his drills as well, which is super good, super encouraging. All right, 25 regular freestyle with full hands. His hands having full control of the water, you can tell that every single arm pull he takes, even though he might not be doing it on purpose yet, he's getting what we would call DPS or 
distance per stroke, maximum distance per stroke. Now, it's also helpful that he's he's a big, strong guy. He is in the Marines. He's always going to have that kind of power. But what I'm talking about is the first time we got him swimming real freestyle, I mean, we'll have to look at the footage. The number was, it's right there. All right. But now I bet you he's taking significantly less strokes because each time he pulls, there's more power with each arm pull. He's covering more distance with each arm stroke. So now it's the pistol drill. Now remember, this is pushing out back. So this is the second half of the pull of the stroke. It's still not the recovery part. There's three parts. This is the second part of the underwater portion, which is the more important part, part anyway. Once you've caught out front, you're almost completely vertical with your forearm is completely vertical. So now you're gonna to start to flex your wrist, wrist as your hand pushes out back. Okay, you're gonna flex your wrist as your hand pushes out back. So you catch and pull out front, push and flex out back. So we're reestablishing that new feel of the water where he presses out back with the inside of his palm. Now when we open up his whole hand, he's gonna feel the pressure over here, but because he wasn't using this whole hand before, he'll probably most likely think it's his whole hand that's creating that pressure. Yeah, it is his whole hand that's creating the pressure, but more so, there's more pounds of pressure being applied to this half of his hand. So now the zipper drill. The zipper drill is to help a swimmer become more aware of what the recovery stroke is for. Now, I would argue technically the zipper drill is making you probably put too much effort through the recovery portion, but it's kind of like a batter with an extra weight on his back, swinging in warmups before he goes up to the plate. When you think about the effort that you're putting forth up here, above the water on the recovery part of the stroke kind of makes you find figure out that it's pretty silly it doesn't really make sense so then when you don't have to do the zipper drill anymore when you can just do a regular recovery your arms will feel like they're kind of just floating above the surface floating forward all on their own We are almost done. This is the last lap of review. I guess since it's regular freestyle, you could say that we're done with review. On this lap though, I'm gonna count his strokes because we want a baseline for what we're gonna do next, which is having him count his strokes and, having to, and seeing if he can get across the pool in one or two less strokes from the number that I count here. Then we'll add in the, the element of the stopwatch and we'll start playing that Swolf game I mentioned earlier where you add the time of the, how long it took you to swim across the pool plus the stroke count and you get your final score. The lower your score, the better, the more efficient swimmer you are. I've seen him take 16 strokes and 17 strokes now. So through the next exercise, we're gonna try and get him down to 15 strokes a length. 
If we can get him down to 15 strokes of length, he's then gonna go forth with, an, uh, with a freestyle that is so efficient already that he could start thinking about, someday I take the fins off and start seeing what my stroke count is without fins too, so I know both stroke counts. Like my stroke count is obviously far lower with fins. The more efficient swimmer you are, the less that difference will be. If you're, uh, if you're still a beginner out there, then your stroke count will probably be a lot different with and without fins. We're finished with warm up and review. We're going in to stroke counting. We're gonna start off by just having him count his own strokes, make him more aware of how many strokes it takes him to get across the pool. Then I'm gonna have him start reaching his fingertips forward, forward a little bit more on each stroke with the intention to let his body rotate a little bit more onto each stroke. That right there is gonna grab him about two extra inches of water with each arm stroke. Ideally, we're gonna try and get his stroke count down to 15 today. Let's give it a shot. When you uh, remember to count your strokes, you'll start to obsess about it. You're start gonna, you're gonna start to think to yourself, man, I, I'm not gonna be satisfied until I'm at 15 strokes every single length of my workout. And then I'm gonna get to 14. So counting your strokes might feel like a chore at first, but eventually every swimmer has told me, eventually they obsess over it. I did, I obsessed over it for like eight years. When I first started counting my strokes, I was at 23, 24, something like that. By the time I finished my career, I was down to about 11 strokes a length. So there's a lot of room for improvement, especially if you're over 20 strokes. We can get that under 20, for sure. Now each time you stretch forward, you're usually you know, doing your catch-up freestyle thing, doing a grid. But each time you stretch forward now, I want you to shoot your hands in opposite directions. So when you pull, not only do I want you to pull your arm all the way back through, but as you do so, I want you to think about how it's pushing the other hand forward. So you're gonna feel the maximum distance that you can pull per arm stroke. You're gonna start to feel like you're sliding and skating. strokes so we now just knocked two off now at the beginning he was starting to pause his stroke in an attempt to get more uh more water to reach farther out in front now i'm actually okay with that at first that's okay you know it might seem like cheating but it's not what you're doing is you're trying to rebalance yourself i get it water makes us feel a little bit tippy until we get used to it being like enjoyable as if we don't have to worry about gravity. I get it, it makes you feel tippy, that's okay. So he's stretching all the way out and he's giving himself a, a second to pause here, but pretty soon you saw by the end of the length, it was more fluid. The arms really never stopped and they were just going side to side at a pretty even rate. So those of you out there, if you have like a lopsided stroke, if you notice that one arm definitely does a different thing than your other arm, First of all, that's okay. I have a lopsided stroke. It's good for rhythm. But secondly, when you start to do this, reaching as far forward and as far backward as you can with each pull, you're gonna start to notice your stroke evens out a lot. A lot. So now we're gonna play the game Swolf, Swim Golf. We're gonna add his, his time 
that it takes him to get across the pool to his stroke count for a final score. Now at first, I want him to think about the stroke count, not the speed. Eventually I'll tell him, okay, you've done 16 or 15 strokes consistently now for like 225s, maybe 325. Now I want you to see if you can go faster without taking more strokes. Continue to take that 15 strokes or continue to take the 16, whatever that number is. But go faster now. That's how you're gonna increase your speed without sacrificing stroke count. And in the end, you're gonna notice that you don't really ever have to go all out or when you do go all out, you'll notice that it's a very controlled all out. That's a good thing. So you took 15 strokes and your time was 35 seconds, so your score is 50. That's a good score. Really good score. So now we're gonna see if we can get you under 50, easy. Our, our goal is now a nice, beautiful, even number, 50. We're trying to get you under 50. You're definitely going to get it for the, uh, when you try this. Right now you're still definitely rotating so much that you're over-rotating. Now, I would rather swimmer over-rotate then under rotate because when you over rotate at least you're stretching out feeling good the only problem with over rotating is sometimes it can be bad on your shoulders however he's not letting his elbow drop I'm watching keeping a close eye on that so what I want you to do is instead of when you rotate thinking about <coughs> pausing until you can get your arm stretched out all the way I want you to think about your arms kind of rope uh, pushing through the back without stopping gonna come right back up to the top. So you're gonna start to look like you're skating. Okay, try that on this one. and 31, which is 49. There we go, we're down one. Now you'll notice he took 18 strokes. That's three more than the last one, but he got a better score. So there's a trade-off. Sometimes less strokes isn't necessarily better. Remember, the goal is efficiency, not necessarily less strokes, but efficiency. And efficiency is going as fast as you can while using the least amount of energy possible. It's not using the least amount of energy possible, period. Now, and that would just be floating, never taking a stroke. So the idea is efficiency is how fast can I move through the water while maintaining an energy level that allows me to go at that pace for, I don't know, however long you're trying to swim. Are you trying to swim at that pace for two minutes? and you can go pretty fast. Are you trying to swim at a pace for 30 minutes? You might want to back off. You might want to go a little bit slower. But swimming the 30 minutes by doing it as fast as you can, like getting as many laps in as you can while maintaining a pace that uses so little energy that you can make it for 30 minutes, that's efficiency.
18 and 31 again. So 49 seems to be a pretty reliable score for you. I tell you what though, those 18 strokes looked the best that I've seen him swim yet. Those were very smooth, very fluid, incredibly efficient. I mean, the fact that he's already under 20. I don't know if you guys heard me say it earlier or if we had been in between cuts, but I was hoping to have him down below 20 by the end of his trip. And so the fact that he's now trying, trying to get down to 15, that's, that's good stuff. Fluid, getting the breath, breathing every two strokes so that you've got oxygen in your muscles at all times. All of that is helping him. The hand lead series drills with those kicks in the body line, all of that's helping him swim across the pool with efficiency that he probably didn't think would be possible for him at this stage, not four days in. You do the right drills, you focus the right way, you do them in the right order, you guys can improve a lot. And if you're interested in doing your own private swim lessons in person or online, head over to our website, rocketswimming.com, and we can talk over there. You can text me, email me, contact me in any way you can on Instagram, TikTok, whatever. And we'll set up uh, at like an online consultation and see if it's feasible or worth it for you to come to Austin. In most cases, I would probably say it's worth it, especially if you already live in the United States. If you live in Texas, you pretty much have no excuse. You should definitely come to Austin, work with me, and, and see how we can improve your strokes to help you achieve your goals. Like Mark. Well, that is all we have for you today. Mark did an incredible job. He inspired me tremendously. I honestly don't, I don't feel like I'm used to seeing anyone make that kind of progress that quickly. He's an excellent student. We thank him again for his military service with the Marines. His, his dedication, his discipline, his work ethic is inspiring. His story, the traumatic experience that he had in the Bahamas, don't let that happen to you. Let's do your swim lessons long before an experience like that. If you know you've got a cruise coming up, if you know you've got a vacation somewhere in open water, and you've never taken formal swim lessons, even if you you know swam in pools growing up, I, write, I really do recommend that you get formal swim lessons from a swim instructor who will teach you how to float on your back, swim on your stomach, and swim on your back. Those three things will help save you if you get yourself into some trouble. If you like this video, splash that like button, subscribe to the channel for free, and consider becoming a member today. If you want your own private lessons in person or online, head over to our Rocket Swimming website. Link will be in the description down below. If you want shorter videos and tips throughout the week, follow us on our other social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. If you want your own Rocket Swimming merch, you can find that on the Rocket Swimming website as well, or you can find it on these YouTube videos. That said, thanks for watching this video. Get ready to rock it. To the moon! Well, after four days of uh, swimming here with Rocket Swimming and Johnny, uh, definitely a day and night difference I feel in my confidence in the water, my swimming capabilities. I mean, I really came here with not much more than the knowledge to tread water, stay afloat, stuff like that, uh, really had no um, concept of uh, any of the strokes or even uh, just the general concepts of swimming. Over the four days, it's definitely exceeded my expectations of uh, how far I thought I would get and how quickly some of the pieces could come together for me. It's definitely something uh, I'll be continuing long after I leave here today, as well as uh, we've already talked about um, future training, uh, either bringing Johnny out by me in Tennessee or even getting back here to Austin in the pool to continue uh, to hone my skills on the freestyle and obviously I'd love to uh, get experienced on the other strokes, the breaststroke and everything else as well. Uh, I definitely uh, believe in the Rocket brand. It's If you can uh, you can swing it, definitely you know check out the videos that come through the channel, reach out to them. They do private lessons, semi-private. I mean, 
I swear by the private lessons, you just get so much, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, attention to your, your stuff. You're really able to make adjustments really fast. And uh, I would definitely recommend the Rocket 22. Excellent.